What's up guys, this is Project and welcome to my guide for getting Ruzid, the newest 3 star to get a specialty change. I'll be covering everything you need to know about him in great detail. First of all, to start a specialty quest, get your Ruzid to level 50 ASAP. This will then unlock his quest in the specialty tab where you can start it and get working on it. Keep in mind if you have two ongoing quests already, you can't start his until you finish whoever you're still trying to get specialty changes for. But his is actually really easy compared to the others. I got Ruzid's change day one when I streamed it on Twitch. If you're new to the game or are hoarding bookmarks, the artifact dust will be a bit problematic, forcing you to summon and sell 3 star artifacts to get the dust needed to gift him. 3 star artifacts give 1 dust, so that's 30 3 stars if you're only using 3 star artifacts at base level. 4 star artifacts give 8, and 5 stars gives 30, but obviously you probably shouldn't fodder your 5 star artifacts just for him unless it's a dupe of an average artifact like Holy Sacrifice. But most 3 star artifacts aren't used in endgame aside Candlestick, Tanfa, Ancient Sheaf, Joker, and what we'll talk about later, Alcelsian Spear, but the rest are mostly safe to get rid of. All new players get Yashka at chapter 1, so that's 8 dust right there, so you just need 22 more. Next on the list is Mice. Kill 500 is actually pretty easy. I was doing it on stage 10 from Bologna's event on Normal. If you haven't farmed her stuff yet, then I recommend that for a little while. Normal costs only 8 stamina versus World's 12. Otherwise, the best place is actually 4-4 Normal difficulty, the lab layout. From clearing everything out, it yielded 29 mice dead, so 500 divided by 29 equals 17 point blah blah, which means you'll need 18 runs or so, which is about 180 stamina to complete that quest if you clear everything each time, which is easy if you're late game, which most people are by now. If you are in no rush though to get them, and still want EXP and just want to auto, then the earliest mice stage is in world 3-3 with 9 mice per run. More EXP, but way slower. And lastly, probably the hardest for everyone, is the Catalyst for Shiny Charms. I was lucky in that I had 5 already from one of those Catalyst chests that give 5 normal Catalysts, but what I farmed from my last one was 5-3. The best way to get Catalysts is to fight stages with the most monsters of that type that drop that Catalyst. As good as the kill boss achievement for Catalyst box is, it's not the most efficient in most cases, and the box is random Catalyst, which is just more RNG. 5-3 has 6 total flowers and a boss flower, which I believe bosses have better drop rates than trash ones. World will have slightly higher rates and more EXP, but a handful of you probably don't have access to that chapter, and well, it's slower. I aim for speed, so I recommend normal, Basically, a Vildred or Bologna can easily clear that stage in under a minute, and the rest is RNG of getting them to drop. Finally, after getting all those quests cleared, you can begin the final trial to digivolving your Ruzimon. The battle is actually easy, somehow you use mice as helpers, even though you basically just murdered 500 of them already, but just kill the guys in the back first and Kartua is easy peasy afterwards. You then get some dialogue, and now you can digivolve into Mega Ruzimon! So now that you got your Mega Digimon, what now? Well first, let's check out his new skill tree. Unfortunately, being grass, he conflicts with Clory and needing runes if you're still working on her tree, so here's the best, most efficient route, in my opinion, on getting all the important stuff first. Do note that each upgrade will increase the cost of the next upgrade, with the final being 20 for triangles. It'll then reset back down to 10, but will now require one epic rune alongside those and then start increasing again. So all in all, it's going to require hundreds of greater runes and maybe 50 or more epic runes to max out his tree. His most important runes to plus 3 as fast as possible are Harvest, Restrict, and in my opinion, Entrust. Harvest pushes his combat readiness every attack by 5%. Restrict adds a CR debuff to Windslash with a 75% chance to lower enemy CR by 15%. Really powerful and Entrust gives more attack decrease chance for his S2. While Guard may seem sweet, it's actually a bit misleading as it's activated by the enemy attacking Ruzid, and then you only have a 10% chance to get evasion buff for 2 turns from that. But that's counterintuitive since the point of Ruzid is to move fast and slow down the opponent from attacking, which in many cases 
makes him burn the 2 turn evasion before the enemy can attack again. So it's not that great for my testing. After those 3 runes I mentioned, concentrate on speed and then the rest is up to you. Get the guard rune last and absolutely ignore courage rune which I'll explain why shortly. But that is this tree, pretty nice effects that make him worth using. A quick review of his skills before moving on to awakening. His S3 is the main course meal, Fwah! boosting everyone's combat readiness by 20% and giving them a speed buff for 2 turns, and also strangely giving himself healing over time for 2 turns as well. A weird move on Smilegate's part, but perhaps it's an attempt to make him survive a bit better, being a thief which innately means he's made of glass, but boy does it work in saving him. Also the new animation looks freaking sick in action, and being a 4 turn cooldown by default, 3 with Mulagor investment means he can push the team super often. Skill 2, Wind Slash, with Restrict Rune activated means he'll have a 75% chance to lower enemies readiness and a 40% chance to lower their attack for 2 turns, 65% when you max out in Trust Rune, or make that a whopping 80% if you invest Mulagora to plus 4. 3 turn cooldown by default, 2 turns if Mulagora invested, and this is actually a beast of a skill. And lastly, S1, the weakest of the bunch, can apply speed debuff 40% of the time. I don't recommend wasting any molas on this one though. For awakenings, his is really great since you only need plus 4 awakening. That's it. Stop there, stop. The rest of the awakenings are damage, and looking at the base stats here is all the reason to avoid wasting time awakening him further. His damage is pitiful. He's not a dealer, he is pure support. With max speed runes, he'll have a 114 base speed, not the fastest, but it's his best stat outside of HP, so the way to build Ruzidmon is speed main set with speed main stat boots. You want him to go as fast and often as possible to debuff as much as he can, and the more he goes means the more often he can use his skills, which means the more often he can push your teammates combat readiness, which means the more your team can attack or heal, which means the enemy's dead, long dead, before they get to do anything. So speed should be on everything. The secondary stat is actually up to you between hit, HP, and unity sets. Hit means more effectiveness, HP means more tankiness, and unity will make him dual attack more, which means more of the stuff I already mentioned. You can get unity sets from raid. For right side main stats you want HP for the Ami, effectiveness or HP for the ring, and speed for boots. Pretty simple. Substats the same, you want speed, effectiveness, HP, defense, and least important, effect resistance. Ignore anything offensive like you would for Clory or Diene. Being a thief means he has access to some of the best artifacts. My number one pick is Rihanna for the extra turn potential. Again, going fast means more times to proc. Use the S3, then he uses S2 from Rihanna, or vice versa, and it's really good on him. Dust Devil gets 2nd place, increasing chance of lowering enemies combat readiness and speed, which goes great if you're using the Unity set, or if you have someone else with Infinity Basket. Moonlight Blade is actually the least one I recommend despite what I've seen a lot of other people try to do, because of what I said about his guard rune, meaning 90% of the time, Moonlight Blade for him is no better than any other character you put it on, and it's never been top tier, and the attack buff is useless on him. So 20% evasion at max max level is... Meh. Instead, if you don't have the other two I mentioned, you could consider Alcelsian Spear for more combat ready reduction against enemies if you don't have the 4 and 5 star artifacts I mentioned. Renon's Memorordium, whatever it's called, is fairly nice as well against the bigger bosses, granting 2% increased speed every attack at max max level, so that's a 20% speed increase for the rest of the battle at max. So his kit is actually great with the addition of the skill tree effects, he's basically a great alternative to Shadow Rose for those that don't have her, as he's not dependent on critting like Shuri, and he provides way more utility than Silk can, and he stomps on Judith users. <laughs> Overall, he's a great unit now, as all specialty changed characters are. If you already have breakers, then he's probably better than Shadow Rose in PvE, I think. Which, speaking of teammates, I think he's best paired with Sid, Bologna, and Assassin Kartua. He can activate Sid's buff, which allows Sid's defense break. Bologna using Hargana or Infinity Basket means more procs for both, and Kartua gives him more evasion if you plan to use Moonlight Blade. 
add Deanna or a healer and he can get a great team for all content except Wyvern. Being a CR pusher, he's also great with slower units like Sigrid or Emil Aether, which is why I invested into him since I don't have a CR pusher to get my Gaither to do bonkers damage. For a total free to play team, him, Falconer Cleary, Commander Lorena, and a healer from Selective makes an amazing team that will complete most of the content in the game more than likely. Hazel might join that quadrinity, assuming her specialty change is good. We'll see. And that should about cover everything you need to know about Ruzid. Is he worth getting and investing to? Yes, I do think so. Especially if you can put some Molagoras into him. But you'll need to get most of his tree for him to truly shine in your comp, and some units will make him better than others, like the ones I mentioned. The best stage from Spirit Altar to grind for runes is 8. You basically get 1-2 triangles 90% of the time, it's fast and easy where you can level a fodder or two, and it costs 11 stamina. If you start needing epic runes, go to stage 9 for a nice balance of both, but it's a slower pace. Stage 10 isn't worth farming unless you really need epic runes, but either way it'll take you over a thousand stamina to get most of his tree, so just prepare for a huge grind. Grass Spirit Altar appears on Thursday and then Saturday and Sunday for global guys, so save your chess pieces and leafs till then. But that is my Ruzed guide, hope you guys found it informative, and hope you enjoy the new doggo. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment down below with any questions, or share how you guys are using Ruzid. If you want to watch me stream Epic 7, make sure to follow my Twitch at Project War. And if you want to see more videos here on YouTube, then subscribe for more Epic 7 epicness. <laughs>